How'd you get there? Well, if you're here and you're that close, might as well just subscribe. What's going on, people? AIWB going on. We're going to do Claude Glock 19 with PL2. And uh, looking forward to this one. But I just want to get it done. So let's get it done. So all the retention is going to be on the O-Lights. It's going to be on this guy right here. So that guy we're going to keep open. And then this I have shaped for those general shapes right there. You don't want to go too far past this because you're going to create... Uh, a holster that wiggles quite a bit. So you want to go just slightly below it. If you go too far, like I said, it's going to wiggle too uh, like too tight on it. You won't be able to get the gun in. But in all technicality, if you're doing it this way, the tighter the better. And you could just flare out the end a little bit. I'll show you how to do that if this is the case. Uh, I believe we should be good uh, with, with how we're doing this. So we're just going to tape this down. Again, if you're using a customer's flashlight, you want to block, or not block, but cover their flashlight with tape, otherwise you uh, could potentially scratch it. And I know customers don't like that. And there is five layers. We are actually we're going to throw this right here, which is just a small piece of blocking. And then we'll go ahead and put this here. And this is only going here just in case there is a um, ambidextrous slide release. So for like the Gen, Gen 5s. But it's really not needed. And we'll go on this side. And again... Bring it back just a little bit from here because you want a piece of material that goes down and then this will bump it up. And that should be good right there. Make sure it's parallel to the top of the frame. Because you will notice on Glock frames, flashlights are usually angled up just slightly. It's uh, the way the frame is molded, so nothing to worry about, but it does happen. Another small piece right here. And that's going to go for the small piece of blocking we're going to do here for the slide release. Oh, there's a piece of crap. Yeah, see? That little piece right there will cause a bump in the Kydex, so we don't want that. And you know, I always take one and go all the way around with it. for this guy. Extend it past just a little bit.
And like I've said before, the flatter the tape, the better it's going to look. All right, now this is a inside the waistband. Let me just pull it up here. Adjustable can't. So we're going to need this guy just like so, which looks pretty good right there. And we will lock this in place. Like I always show you, a small piece, lay this down where it's going to go, and then when you have it angled, that's where you want to place that other piece, because it will extend past, and then it won't work that well. You can see here, I'm just putting that down, and then that's just going to go right there. thing left to do is to put on the uh, retention and then bake it and go to town so I'm gonna see if I have a uh, Glock 19 with PL mini 2 19 with PL mini Those should be good sure it's in the center lay the tape down and then I personally use my dad bod and pin it against the table and then tape it right at the muzzle and if you watch my other videos you know I take the thickest piece of tape I have and I go right across here with it and then I pinch it right in the middle all the way down All right, now this is desert tan. We got a desert tan right here. It's roughly eight by 10 or so, eight by 12. Let's see here. It's eight by 12. Yep, seven and a half by 12. Go ahead, put it in the oven, and then uh, when you see it, it's gonna look like this. Looks pretty damn good. I like it. Looks like it went well, so. Open her back up. Get everything off. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and find a pencil that's not broken. Okay, it's the only thing that sucks about these uh, these fabric marking pencils is the tip just breaks off all of the time. All right, so this is um, half sweat shield. So you know me, I do the half sweat shield pretty much from the injection port to the um, which we'll call it the rear sight. And with this, I like to have one in front of it and one behind it. This guy will come up. And then we will see. Let's see here. Line it up. Find where your trigger guard ends. All 
right. And when you're doing it on this side, make sure you're not cutting this off. So we see the line right here goes over and it's right, right there. So it is not cutting it. All right, and then we'll go ahead and, and take care of this part after. But let's see here. Come down, we know this is gonna go up this way and then come over and our RMR cut is gonna be right there. So we will come down just like so. So get your drill. This is 730 seconds. Yep. 730 seconds. Go ahead and drill. For your foamy. Don't push so hard where you contact the other side. It just won't. It'll, it'll look bad on the inside. And then go ahead and drill the other holes. cut it and it's gonna look like this <laughs> next we're gonna clean it by deburring it this is a Noga RC 2000 awesome tool I'll go ahead and just clean inside of that up real quick Right, and take some of that, wipe it down, right, looks good. And time for hardware. Again, all the hardware I could, or all the hardware I use, can be found at HolsterSmith or KnifeKits.com. It's the same company; they're sisters. And the molds I'm using can be found on that website as well. However, you could go to MultiMoldsGuns.com. And uh, you can check out Tony's stuff. He's got some awesome molds, some of which aren't listed on the Knife Kits website. So go ahead and check those out. And as far as Loctite, we're just going to do one. I do Loctite on the one that doesn't pivot. It's always recommended that the end user finds where they want everything and then they do it themselves. But we don't know how they want it. So we'll just hook that up, wipe it. This is uh, going to be cleaned as well. And we'll take our mold here and see. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's nice. I like that. Cool. So there is a Glock 19 with Olight PL Mini. Hell yeah, go out and make something good. I forgot to mention when using foam, all right? When you have custom prints like, um, like this right here, right? Anything that is uh, a product of sublimation needs to have different foam. So if you notice, I have one that says solid colors and I got a pile that's not. So. If you look, I think I've messed this one up, but you can see outlines. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see outlines on where I accidentally pressed um, printed stuff. So when you, this one doesn't have any, when you are doing light colored holsters like this, it is imperative 
that you use clean foam because if you use foam that has a residue from the sublimation prints on it, it will transfer to your light colored Kydex and it will not come out. Just keep that in mind. A dirty shop means a busy shop. So always respect the hustle.